Morning crew and welcome back to the Andy Mechanic YouTube channel episode 8 of the Big Little Adventure Trailer Build. Now I have done a little bit of work on the trailer since episode 7. I've made some little brackets for the rear lights and the number plates. More on that shortly, remind me. Um, but this video is to cover the handbrake, the parking brake system on this little trailer. And it's been something that's been bugging me for a while for a number of reasons. One is there's not a lot of room on the A-frame at the front for the handbrake lever to be mounted. Now, traditionally, and as designed by a cruise master, the handbrake lever should mount to the back, oh man, it's heavy, the back of the special off-road hitch. It mounts on these two bolts here. However, because our little adventure trailer has got the extender drawbar fitted to it, which means we can extend the drawbar, um, <laughs> we can't do that because that box section goes right underneath the trailer. There's no space for the handbrake to be at the back. So it has to be remotely mounted. Not a problem. All it's doing is pulling on a cable. So that should be easy enough. And with the kit from um, Cruise Master, I was supplied this cable. Now this is just a wire cable. There's no exterior uh, sheathing. It doesn't have an outer cable like on automotive cables, but it should be fine. Uh, I've taken a little look um, at a video that Cruise Master have put out to try and see how they've mounted the cable on the chassis because there's nothing in the instructions to do with the handbrake system which is a bit of a pain to be honest but anyway we'll have a look at the photo and then we'll go and look at the trailer uh, and then we'll go from there uh, but first before we do that let's I'll show you the back of the trailer and the little mounts that I've made for the lights and the number plate here we go <laughs> Okay, so this was an evening job, and this side, on the right hand side, you have to have the number plate. Let me grab a number plate. Oh, there's one up there, look. Can I get there? It's a long way off. Uh, there we are. Okay, we've got a number plate. Trailers have the same size number plates as cars here in New Zealand. Bit of a pain. Now, I would have liked to have mounted the number plate in that orientation because that's sort of the way that they all are but a lot of trailers in New Zealand have the number plates were actually wrapped around the mud guard like that so they're not even in the vertical orientation they're more at 45 degrees if you've got an angular mud guard if you've got a round mud guard you're really screwed now I read the legislation on this and it says the number plate must be in the vertical orientation now Imagine that this is an oblong, which of course it is. That is the oblong in the horizontal plane. This is the oblong in the vertical plane. So to me, as an engineer, that is a number plate mounted in the vertical orientation, as per the legislation, which means that the vast majority of cars and lorries and motorcycles in New Zealand are all illegal. Who would have thought? Anyway, so <laughs> that's going to mount on there. This isn't the actual number plate for the trailer. I've got to get it registered yet and get a warrant of fitness done. Uh, the light will fit above there on that plate. These holes down here are for the cable to run with some cable ties. And the light will also have a clear section in the tail light to, to light up the number plate. So we've not got a separate number plate light, which again, you have to have here in New Zealand. Uh, on this side, I've just tried to cut down a bit of weight and just done that exactly the same for the light here. This one won't have the clear cut out because there's no number plate to light up. And as regards mounting, well, there you go. Look, it's not too bad, is it? So it does the job. Very happy. So that's one more job ticked off the list. Okay, right to the laptop. Let's take try and work out how Cruise Master fits 
the handbrake cable to their system. Here we go. Okay, this is a still image from, that I've taken from one of the Cruise Master videos, Cruise Master CRS2, which is the system that we've got. And you can see the arm coming off the back of the brake drum. And the cable is looped through the arm, and then somewhere around there, I don't know, it seems to be doubled up all the way down, but normally you, there'd be some kind of clamp on the cable, and then you run it down. I don't know why they've run two cables through, but anyway. Uh, and then it's mounted, by the looks of it, onto the arm, maybe? This is the wiring here in the sheathing, and then there's some kind of clamp there for it to run through. Obviously this cable, when you pull the cable, the cable moves in that direction, so this must just be like a slip clamp or a guide for the cable to run in. It's very important that the arm is pulled directly forwards. What you don't want to do is try and pull the arm at an angle, which is a little bit confusing because I'm wondering how they did that, because there's only one pulley in the kit that I've been supplied, and that will be used to balance the brakes. Basically, you have, well, let's do a drawing. Okay, cardboard aided design comes to the rescue again. So, if we draw the... Let's do it down here, then you can go, we can go up that way. So we've got the drum brakes here. I'm not drawing the wheels, okay, just the drum brakes. And on the back is the arm. We'll just put that as a little line. Now, up here we've got the handbrake. Again, doesn't need to be particularly complicated, the drawing. And the way that you normally do it, because in the kit, we've got a pulley. In fact, let's open the kit out, because we've got to go in there at some point anyway. Bear with me. Uh, there we go. Right. Cable. We know what that looks like. Clamps. And this bit. Okay, now this bit is very, very important. This is a little pulley, and the cable goes through the pulley from one side brake to the other side brake. So when you pull on this, it equals the force to both brakes. Critical. So that cable somehow goes up here goes round the pulley, and then it comes back to the other brake. Now, obviously we have, in this case, the link rod, uh, and it's adjustable, so that way round, with the pulley down the bottom, basically, you know, coming down here. So you've got that, that component, oh, terrible drawing, that component down there, it's just bring it across a little bit, there we go. And we've got a mozzie in the garage. God damn it, I hate mosquitoes. Oh, hang on. Hang on. <sighs> yes. Got him. Right. Now, the problem here is that lever has to be pulled in that direction and not that direction. If you try and pull it in that direction, there's a good chance you'll bend the lever and it'll be a lot harder to apply the brakes. So, the cable would have to go through another pulley here. So, it would come up here, round another pulley, and then go off like that. See? And I think what Cruise Master's done is rather than have a pulley, they've had some kind of a guide. But that would chafe on the cable. Oh, I didn't get there. God damn it, mosquitoes. I hate you. Right, okay. <laughs> Am I going to refilm this? Probably not. So, bit confusing. There isn't any diagrams with the, uh, with the instructions and stuff that were supplied. I don't think there is. Have a look. Well, there's this one that I haven't opened yet. It says on it... ID plate, must be fit to the drawbar, and fitment checklist, oh, an ID plate, didn't know we had one of those. Let's have a look. Oh, look at that. That's cool. Right, so we need to make sure we keep all of that, that's got to go on the trailer. And what's this? Is this some kind of certification thingy for Australia? Packing the slip. Uh, nothing really of any importance there. Certainly no instructions on how to fit the handbrake system. Ah, oh, custom for check sheet. Okay. Hinges. Okay. Anything about there? Oh, look. See, towing adjustment. Remember, we were talking about towing on one of the previous videos. Towing a single two millimeters. Tandem, front axle 2 mil, rear 0. Our trailer will be zero towing. I don't want any towing whatsoever. Um, and that's, that's an English thing. 
but it has got some torque settings that's very useful because I didn't have that before okay but there's nothing here to do with the handbrake check brake adjustment that's all it says okay right well that's of no use whatsoever so back to the drawing let's go and see how this is going to work on the trailer Oakley, Oakley, right, you've got a great view of what's going on. We've got the cable. We'll thread it through the arm, as it's shown on the video, and we'll bring it back on itself. We'll give ourselves plenty of slack just for the demo. And the cable should, there's obviously a bracket on the back of the backing plate, which is obviously to do with the handbrake cable, because it's got a, a little slot in it. And I suppose forward of that, there'd be, need to be a clamp otherwise you know it's just going to pull through and the pull direction for this arm is in that direction so when this cable gets pulled it'll activate the handbrake this is only the handbrake don't forget this vehicle's got electric brakes for the service brake now this clamp here it's got a slot in it you can see I can pull the cable through and back out again so it's not really going to act as a guide for this cable because you know it, it's going to it's going to jump out at some point this cable don't forget is slack when the handbrake is off. When the handbrake's applied, it's gonna pull the cable in sort of a 45 degree angle forwards, and it's gonna, all it'll do is just pull it, it'll just pull it out of that slot. So there should be really some kind of nylon bush in there for this cable to run through, but I haven't been supplied it, and I couldn't see it on the video. Um, so it's not really ideal, to be honest. Hmm, not very happy with that. So I get a really good close-up of the, the setup for you so you can see exactly what's going on. So I'm going to bring the camera around. You can see that bracket with the slot in it. And it's got quite a large hole in there and it's all welded to the backing plate. If I bring you around, I'll do another shot from the other side, hang on. So this is looking from the front with the arm to the rear down there. And again, you can see the style of bracket that they've got going on. It's, sorry about the focus. There we go, look, I've locked the focus for you, so you can see exactly the style of bracket. Now, I've been in the automotive industry for <laughs> many, many years, and I've worked on lots and lots of different vehicles. And that bracket on the back of the backing plate, with the slot in it, um, it looks to me like it's designed to accept an automotive style handbrake cable. That's one with an outer, sh you know, outer sheath, and an inner cable that you find pretty much on every single car on the planet. Uh, usually though, the handbrake cable will, will mount directly onto the back of the backing plate and the inner will then you know, extend further onto the, the arm on the brake shoes. So, I don't think, personally, this kit is suitable for use with that brake design. I think it needs uh, a cable with an outer. The outer is basically ends at that bracket. It locks into place using some little spring clips or a plastic molding or something. And then the inner would then protrude um, with a, a little sort of similar kind of thing to that on the end of the cable, but, but smaller. And that would then bolt into the arm, the quadrant arm on the back of the brake drum. So, I thought, bugger, let's ring up Trailcom, uh, the suppliers here in New Zealand of the Cruise Master suspension, and have a little chat with Cameron and see what he has to say about it, because I think I'm right, and I don't think the style of cable that they've sent me is really gonna work very well. Sure, I could make up some kind of a bush on the lathe, fit it in, I could probably make it work, probably. But I think, my gut feeling is, it should have an automotive style cable. So, let me uh, contact Cameron and see what he has to say. Okay, so I emailed Cameron, couldn't get him on the phone. Obviously in a meeting, busy chap. Uh, and he says here, look, I've had a look at the Cruise Master website and they do not provide a sheathed type handbrake cable. Now bear in mind the Eiffel Williams trailers that also have, they have drum brakes which are activated, the service brakes are activated, well, the service brakes and the handbrake actually are activated by a sheathed 
cable, an automotive style cable with the outer and the inner. Uh, and he goes on to say they don't provide sheathed handbrake cables for this particular system. Uh, he asked Mike at Christine Products, uh, that's the chap that drilled the drums for us with the Suzuki uh, Jimny PCD, so the studs, we could use the same wheels, about what they do. And they use the same style back plate and they have only ever supplied unshe unsheathed cables and never had an issue. I don't get it. I don't understand. And he just sent me another picture of the, the, uh, the kit that Cruise Master supply, which is pretty much identical to what we've got here, other than the fact that that uh, uh, looks like an aluminium roller as opposed to a nylon one. That's about the only difference. So I need to have a bit of a think, don't I? Um, as an ex warrant of fitness inspector here in New Zealand, and uh, basically if the vehicle has got a handbrake fitted, it has to work correctly. And I don't think having a cable chafing on a metal bracket that's also got a slot built in to allow the cable to exit said metal bracket uh, and there's no particular bush there and so on um, I, I really think that that would be a warrant fail if the guy was being picky um, also as soon as it does jump out of that bracket which it will do pretty quickly all your adjustments gone because the cable now the distance is effectively shorter and you want your handbrake probably won't work very well so, uh, and it's going to be pulling the arm at an angle as opposed to in line with the arm, which again is another problem. So, I'm not happy with it. I need to come up with a plan. <sighs> Time for a coffee and a cigarette. How the hell are you going to fix that now, Andy? Right. I've done a bit of research and I think I might be able to get a cable made up. Uh, I found a company in Hamilton, which is about an hour and a half from where I live, uh, that make up handbrake cables. Perfect! I can just measure up what I need and get them both made, because I always need two, get them made up, and then I can make some brackets and bits and pieces and get it all fitted. Absolutely superb. Let me give them a call. Yes, good morning. Uh, Andy Mechanic here. Uh, been on your website. Believe you do uh, handbrake cables made to order as per a design that's supplied or an old pattern. Yes, you do. Excellent. Okay, well, I've got a trailer here. We're doing a, a building a trailer for a charity ride from Cape Rianga all the way down to Bluff. Sets off in a couple of weeks' time. Being supplied a Cruise Master suspension system which obviously has a handbrake system as part of it and uh, the original cables that are supplied or the cable is supplied it's not really suitable so if i do you a, a drawing of what i need could you get them made up say by tomorrow no not tomorrow okay um i'm against the clock on this any ideas if i can get the drawings to you today um, how you know what sort of time frame we're looking at you can't look at it until next week back end of next week so they won't be ready for two to three weeks oh okay all right listen um, I'll have to think about it because we're gonna be pushing it for time all right I'll see if I can find some some other way of doing this all right I'll give you a call back if needed all right cheers bye bugger So, what's next, Andy? <sighs> okay. So, thinking back, the original plan for building this trailer uh, was, where possible, to use bits and pieces we had kicking around the workshop. And I really sort of only meant that for the steel. But it seems it's going to extend to handbrake cables, doesn't it? All right, let me have a look, see what I can find. Ah, yes. Suzuki DR200 clutch cable. Who knows? That might work. It might just. Super job. What do you think? Worth a chance?
it's lucky I've got a garden full of old motorcycles, isn't it? Uh, there is another DR kicking around down the side of the workshop, a yellow one, one of the trail bike ones. It's got the same clutch cable, so I'll get that one ripped off as well. They're not in the greatest condition. Look, we've got, you know, all sorts of damage to the outer sheathing and so on, but it will give me a template. One of the, oh, there's, God, damn it, did I get him? There, look. Mosquito. Dead. Little bastard. Right. Um, one of the problems, I was thinking about this, because there are other suppliers that can make up handbrake cables, right? And I'm thinking, A, it's going to cost a lot of money. And my decision to go for the Cruise Master system, and it was well over the budget that I had available anyway, uh, was based on a full kit, everything in it to do the job for a particular price. Um, I think I paid about $2,700 for that kit. The retail was much, much higher than that. And I'm very, very grateful to Trailcom for doing with such a wonderful deal. And to be perfectly honest, they are very new to the Cruise Master system. They've just recently got the importation rights to be a distributor here in New Zealand. So they're learning about it as well and that's one of the reasons why they brought me on board although we're happy to to support the venture because I can give them good feedback so please don't think for one minute that I uh, I have a grievance I don't but as a customer in my situation building a trailer I made the decision 2600 stroke 700 dollars for the complete kit uh, now having to get some bespoke cables made up would probably add about another $400 to that. That's another big chunk of change. And on top of that, because they are bespoke cables, you know, they're the only two in the world of that particular spec to fit this trailer and the Cruise Master system. If one was to break, then there'd be another delay in getting one made up. Chances are we wouldn't be able to get one made up until we got back home and you know went through the rigmaroles of placing the order and getting the cable done. If I can use something off the shelf, then it's easy to get hold of, right? DR200 clutch cable. Every single Suzuki dealership in New Zealand will have a Suzuki DR200 clutch cable on the shelf. No problems at all. So, readily available. Now, one of the problems is, obviously, the cable thickness is significantly smaller it really really is but it's free and I have nothing to lose and if it does snap what the hell's going on next door get off my fence anyway if it does snap and it's not particularly strong enough it then gives me a template to give to the guys to make up an automotive spec much larger diameter in a cable and outer to be fair to this size so this if anything else is is going to be a temporary measure uh, and it would also work as a pattern and hey if that's the case I'll just have to get a third cable made up so I've got a spare one you know it's not the end of the world but again that's big money and hopefully this will work I just need to be a little bit more careful when I'm applying the handbrake and the handbrake's only there just to stop the trailer rolling around so it's, it's really not going to get that much use so Fingers crossed, it might work. So, what have we got on one end? Well, we've got one of those little, you know, pieces that that should fit directly onto the arm off the backing plate. Um, this bit, geez, this bit here, that's too small. That's going to slide through the metal bracket that's welded to the backing plate. So, I might need to make something up on the lathe uh, as like a little collar that I can slip over the cable push it back and then it'll provide that additional support and diameter for this to sit nice and neatly in that bracket that's already on the trailer. At the other end we have this. Now if I go and get the adjuster off the perch that I left outside because I'm an idiot, if I go and get the adjuster that gives us an M8 thread so I can make a bracket and probably just use a bolt 
uh, sorry, a nut to secure it. Or if I'm really keen, I can use a thicker piece of steel and tap it out M8, and then I've got some adjustment and I can make use of that little wheel, locking wheel on there as well. Because the more adjustment, the better, right? Yeah, that's important. Um, and the nipple at the end, that would then connect to a balance bar. So we'd have the two cables coming up to a balance bar and then it'll pivot in the middle and then it'll go off to the handbrake. And I'm hoping, it hasn't yet been decided, but I'm hoping to be able to use a solid rod between the handbrake and the balance bar. Obviously with some little fittings at the end that I make up because uh, the balance bar has to be allowed to pivot. We're not gonna use a wheel like they did in the Trojan kit, uh, which is there, look. We're not gonna use that to balance it. We'll actually have a bar that pivots on a bolt, uh, and that way, you know, any any discrepancies in adjustment, uh, the balance bar will just tilt one way or the other. You'll see it all working when it's done, <laughs> if it works. Okay, let's go and have a quick look at the trailer and see where we're gonna mount the handbrake. I think we need to mount the handbrake first. Okay, so we're at the front of the trailer. This is the extender drawbar thing that we just, geez, sorry camera. Uh, extender drawbar that we designed. And I think this is obviously the bike rack. We can't, that's fixed, we can't move that. So, I have marked it up. These two marks here relate to those two bolt, bolt holes. So that gives us an idea of the positioning front to back. And I had originally put it here as regards its positioning side to side. And then I decided it had to go here. But now I've changed my mind, oh, another mozzie. I've changed my mind. And we're gonna go back to this positioning here. And the reason for that is underneath here is a mount on the chassis which sticks out to about here. And obviously we don't want that rod to foul that mounting. So we're going to have to come across just a little bit. So I'm going to make up a bracket that I can weld into here somehow that's going to mount the handbrake. And then that's in. And then we'll focus on the cables. But they look pretty good. I have Jerry one at the moment, so we can go and take a look at that now. And then we'll do some fabrication work. Hokely dokely. Right, so you get a rough idea. I've put a bolt through on the pivot for now. It's just an M6 bolt. And it sort of sat in the bracket is the outer cable reach across just down there look obviously that needs that extra piece that space are making on the lathe and then it comes up and I've just got it zip tied because obviously cable routing or routing is pretty critical as well so I've just put a temporary cable tie on there to see where it sits and then and this is the right hand side obviously that's the front of the trailer down there and then the cable will come around it's long enough luckily the length is about right we can take it underneath and then it'll sit somewhere around about there. We can make a bracket off the side here to mount those two cables in. Another fly, geez. So I think we're gonna be all right. Fingers crossed, I just hope that they're strong enough. I really am terrible at filming. I actually started to film the air compressor and forgot to turn the camera around. Anyway, such is life. So for that particular plate, it's gonna to need to be a flat plate that I can weld in, and then it's gonna need a vertical plate to mount the, the handbrake to. So if you imagine the plate's coming across here, and then a piece that comes up will have those two holes in it. So let me make a start, because you're all really eager to see if this works, aren't you? So am I, because we've got about 14, about two weeks. What day is this today? Thursday. No, we have about two and a half weeks before we leave.
That's a nine millimeter hole. Why would you drill a hole nine millimeters in the handbrake? We're gonna have to make it a 10. Because 10's better than nine. Holy moly, dead everywhere. Right, 10 mil bolts, I would have thought. Okay, so let's stick it on that side, so away from the arm. Although, that's where the stress is, that's where the pull is, so maybe better in there, it'd be more in line with the pull then, wouldn't it? Take away some of the stress. I might just round that bit off as well, actually. Detail. <laughs> it's not like we've got time for detail at the moment. Jeez. It's pretty good. I don't think we need to get the spanners. We'll be all right with that. Right, let's go and see how it sits on the trailer. Oh, right. I won't weld this in proper until the end because, you know, I might need to move things. I don't think I will, but I might need to move them. Okay. So the handbrake is in the fully on position. It's, it's the, the, the arm is all the way up, so we've got to make sure we've got clearance on this bit here. So now we were going to put it over this side, weren't we? About there. So we've got heaps of clearance. What we'll do is we'll make that level with the back of there. And I just want to put a score line just for the final positioning of it. And then we can take the handbrake off and get it welded up. Okay, so somewhere around about there. There we go. I can just about see that. I need to shut my scriber. It's no good, is it? Okay, you're going to find me a little tiny magnet um, right angle thingamajig to hold it in place. These are really useful, this kind of stuff. Okay, bring him in a little bit. There we are. Stick him on there. We know it's at right angles. We'll bring him back a little bit. Get him lined up. Looks pretty square to me, does that? A little bit further out. And then we need to move that back a little bit. So we're flush at the back. Just so it looks tidy. Cool. Welding time! Yes! That'll do me, Gromit. Now, how does it fit? So, it's going to be bracket to that side, so we'll put the bolts through. There we go. One, two, and 
some nuts. Yes, look at that. Happy with that. Okay, handbrakes on. Next job, we've got the bracket to mount the outer end of the two cables at the handbrake sort of end, not at the brake drum end. And then after that, we've got a balance bar to make. Okay, let's do the bracket first. Right, so I managed to salvage another cable from out the back. So we've got both cables in position. Now obviously this one here, because we're going down the left hand side of the uh, extender hitch, uh, the drawbar, this one has got quite a big loop on it. So I'm gonna to need to put some kind of bracket off the chassis just to support that. Uh, but this one's actually not too bad. So the bracket for that one will be a lot shorter, but that, that's all incidental stuff. It's not a problem, easy to solve. So looking down from the top, what we need now, is a bracket off the side of here, welding to here, which I think these probably move, will move across a little bit actually further that way, so that make sure that they, they, they're equally spaced and the center line between the two is bang in line with the, uh, the coupling on the bottom of the handbrake. So it's a nice dead straight line all the way down to the balance bar and of course to where the cables are mounted. Huckly duckly, that magic number, here we go. Uh, oh, it's about 4.2, 4.3 uh, centimeters, so about 43 millimeters. Just to measure, I can't even get into the back. Hang on, we'll do it this way around. Donkey. Right, center line of that arm. Yeah, 43 mil. Excellent. Okay, so we've got the extender hitch down here that's the box section and about here I'll just I'm going to draw it not to scale just to give us a bit more room for drawing we've got the arm off the handbrake and that distance there is 43 millimeters and over here trying to not block the view for you we've got the two cables coming in down there and the distance the center point between those two cables must be or should be ideally 43 millimeters and the reason for that then is that the center of the balance bar will be in line with the pull we don't want it all to be pulling off to one side so these are going to, have to be spaced far enough apart from the center line so we've got room for those adjusters those little wheel adjusters and stuff uh, so the bracket is going to sit across here like that off the chassis they're going to come through and what we'll do is I'll find a nice thick bit of steel, probably something uh, about eight mil, I would say to give us plenty of thread depth. So eight mil plate, maybe if I can find some question mark and we'll put the threads in there and then the cables will actually thread into it and they'll be really well located. And then from there, those, the inners will stick forwards. We'll have the two nipples just there. Look, they will fit into a balance bar like that. It's very simple. And then from there, there'll be a coupling with a bolt in the middle. It will come off. And then hopefully we're gonna have a piece of, I've got some nice stainless steel uh, 10 mil diameter rod that we can use with another coupling across here with a bolt to go through the handbrake. So all going to plan something like that, maybe. Just gonna put some bolts in there where I've threaded. I don't want to get any splatter in it.
<laughs> well, I only had 10 mil plates kicking around and I was I struck lucky today. You're going to focus? There we go, look. So it's still really hot, we'll leave it alone. And uh, the next job is to do that little balance plate that goes between the two cables. And then we can make the rod that connects it to the handbrake. Looking pretty cool. Now there might be, because there's a lot of force on this, right? And it may well be in the future we upgrade it to proper automotive size cables. And if we do, then it might start to bend this bracket. I, you know, it is a lot of force. So I might put another piece just coming back onto the chassis rail back here just to support it because we're not too far away and it might come in handy for doing that when we do the wiring and stuff as well just to clip the wire into so I'll uh, in fact I think I've got the perfect piece here we go a lot of piece that I cut yesterday so that can go on there like that and that'll just give it the extra support that it needs <laughs> just to show you where I got the piece from look I used one of these I just filled the holes in my well cleaned it all up and then use that as the bracket pre-made how lucky was that okay so whilst that's cooling down and it is rather hot um, I'm gonna start taking some measurements and work out the balance bar now this is not going to be as easy as it sounds because there are two nipples involved that's right each cable has a nipple that has to to uh, you know be fitted into that balance bar somehow yeah, a bit of tricky engineering about to happen. Right, the balance bar is going to be a piece of flat plate in the horizontal plane. We will have the two cables coming in like this. Now the cables, <laughs> okay, not quite like that because they're going to be about equidistant. We'll tell. We'll just trim that off. Look, there you go. Yeah, gone. Now <laughs> I'm drawing it upside down as well. Now the distance between the cables is 60 millimeters. Okay, uh, so on the balance bar there will be a hole here and a hole here. Now there also needs to be a slot, but ideally only half the depth of the plate. This is where it becomes difficult. So where's my small pen? We need more ac an accurate pen, there we go. So we've got to cut a slot in there, obviously, to allow the cable into the balance bar. So that's going to be the difficult bit. What I could do, and I could cheat, is I could use um, two thicknesses of bar. So this one, I can drill all the way through and I can put the slots in, and then I can put another bar underneath, only with the holes in it, and then tack weld it together. That will be the easiest way of doing that, and that's probably how I'll do it. Uh, once that's done, we have a hole to drill in the middle. Obviously, on the forward side, we'll have to leave a few millimetres strength in there. And then from there, there'll be a clevis mount, which will be here, like that. And then there'll be the, the stainless steel bar. You may say stainless steel, because it's all I've got. It won't be as bent as that one, it'll be nice and straight. And then we'll use a bolt, probably an M8 bolt through there. Uh, and it, it'll be a bolt that's not threaded all the way. So we've got a nice purchase and not too much free play. Or too much movement. We don't want play on there. You know, I want to get the whole thing adjusted up properly and it should work really well. So, balance bar, two pieces of steel. We need to know how deep the nipples are first, don't we? And the diameter. Let's go and do that. Right, we're on the trailer. Now, I've used a bit of cardboard so the camera's got something to focus on, otherwise it'll be bouncing all over the place. Right. So, turn that on, make sure it's all the way in. It is zero. Boom. Okay, so length of nipple. Oh, look at that, exactly, nearly exactly 10 millimeters. Okay, remember that. And diameter of said nipple. Let's go for eight and a half. So it has a little bit of free play on the nipple to get it in easy. Okay, so we'll go for eight and a half diameter and 10 mil length. Excellent. Okay, I have to write it down, otherwise I'll forget. So, nipple, I'm sure you two will ban me for this anyway. Nipple diameter is 10 millimeters. And, oh no, sorry, that was the depth, wasn't it? 
8.5. Jeez, on camera, Mr. Young, as well. It's all good. So, I did pull down to 8.5. That allows about 0 0.2, 0 0.3 of a mil movement, which is fine. And the depth of the nipple, so we can draw that here, look. This is the nipple side on with the cable coming out. And the depth is 10 millimeters. There, look. So, our piece of steel in total wants to be 10 millimeters thick. So, I would say something like, <laughs> I haven't got any eight. God. Okay, what we need to do as well then is measure, oh, wrong pen. We need to measure how thick the cable is. Uh, and, and basically, that we're assuming the cable's mounted in the middle of the nipple. And then whatever, so whatever, if I just put a little dotted line, so that, that will be the bottom plate thickness. And the top plate thickness will be that plus the thickness of the cable. Jeez, more measurements. Right, let's go and do that. Okay, one cable. Now, just to check, does the nipple look to be in the centre? It's got this little slidey piece on it as well, so it's a little bit, uh, you know, doesn't quite make it obvious, but it looks pretty damn in the middle to me. I'm happy with that. So, all we need to know really is the thickness of the cable, which is... Oh, 2.1 let's call it 2.1 mil okay and the overall length we know is near as damn it 10 mil so we can just split the difference either side okay so cable thickness is 2.1 millimeters total thickness of the or depth of the nipple is 10 so that's going to be 7.9 millimeters divided by 2 will give us the thickness of the bottom plate and then we'll have to round it down because it's all we have. So that will be basically, basically it's going to be a four mil plate, isn't it? So I think we're going to need to do it three mil. Then we've got a little tiny bit of three mil will be fine anyway. Three millimeters for the bottom plate. Now I don't have any seven mil plate. I've only got six. I'm not use eight. Eight's silly. So we'll use, we'll use six mil for the top. That'll be fine, definitely fine. We've got nine millimeters, so one millimeter of the nipple will stick out the top. We can cope with that. I finished before I'd finished. So we know that that's 60 mil. So this balance plate, we know that that's uh, down to 8.5. So if we make the balance plate, let's say, um, I don't know, 80. That would only give us 10 mil either side. So no, let's make it a let's make it a hundred across from there to where I'd cut it earlier on, 100 millimeters. And then we should have a little bit extra sticking out the sides. Hopefully that won't catch on the chassis. 50 mil from the center line. I think we'll be okay. Yes, we will because turning it around, center line. I actually moved it. This is this was 13. I, moved, I, made, I had to make it 25, 25 mil, and then we. The difference was uh, that's now 38. I had to shuffle the whole thing across. It is not quite central to the handbrake. It really couldn't be because there wasn't enough gap between the actual uh, box section and that uh, that adjuster. This thing here, look. So it was getting a bit tight and I had a weld line to do and stuff. So hey, forgive me. It's going to run very at a very, very minute angle. It'll be fine. It'll work. Okay. Life's a compromise, right? Okay. We have a thunderstorm passing by. If all the lights go out all of a sudden and the MIG stops working, then it'll be time for a cup of tea. Until then, we will crack on. Look what I spotted. We've got two bits that we need for this job. So just strip this down. That's, oh, hang on, that's stuck on there, I'll have to grind that off I think, we can get rid of this one. I'm not using the pulley anymore, I mean, there's a nut in there to get rid of. Cool, that's one piece we need, that can go at one end of the rod, uh, it saves me making it, and this piece is stuck on with a, oh man, they chewed the threads up and all sorts, so we'll have to cut that off. Bear with me.
ones. That'll work. We'll put those to one side. They're there for later. Decided to change the design a little bit. This usually happens. Okay, great idea to use two pieces of steel. So we only have to cut the slot in one of them, the top one, and then the bottom one only has a hole drilled in it for the actual nipple diameter. But there's nothing to stop the cable jumping out from the top. That would be bad. So why not use three pieces of steel and the middle one has the slot for the cable and we can just sandwich the nipple in between it put the put the, the two plates on top and bottom that have only got the hole drilled and sandwich the whole thing together and then that way there is absolutely no way the cable can jump out plan c excellent let's crack on yeah, we won't be needing that piece But you didn't plan on that. <laughs> what do you say, Holly? Yeah, right. Thanks for that. What you like, honestly. Look what I found. The back of the shed. Sorry, workshop. Right. Oh, no, I think it is. 2.9. Well, near as damn it, 2.9. That's not too bad, is it? Okay, so that is thicker than the cable itself. So I reckon we can use three bits of that, 100 mil long. And then we can clamp them all together, drill the three holes, because there's a hole for the, um, the link rod to the handbrake mechanism. And then the middle plate only, we cut the slots for the cables. Yes. I think the storm's passed. Seems to be getting quieter outside, which is good. At least it hasn't been heavy rain. Now, where's my drawing? There we are. Always need a good drawing. So, they are 60 millimeters apart. This is 100 millimeters in length, approximately. It is. So, uh, 60 is for 20 in from each end. 20 and 80. Always important that you measure from the same end. We used to, at school, we used to mark the metal like that and like that. And you'd always take your measurements and your right angly stuff from those sort of face edges. And it didn't matter too much. If you cut the plate out from a piece of steel, a bit of flat plate, it didn't matter too much if it wasn't actually square all your measurements and your markings for your holes and stuff will be in the right place. How cool is that? Right, so now we need to work out how far down this balance plate the, the, we need to put the center punch mark for the nipple. We're very short on cable. We are really short on cable. So, I need to go and measure. I'll go and find out. You can trust me, I'll do it on my own. Okay, you wanna see? Fine. So we can sort of assemble this bit now, can't we? Now I think this is handed, I think. Which one's the big the actual these are slightly different. One's got a slightly smaller hole than the other. And the the little ferrule thing on the end of the end of the cable. There, small one on that side. And that's the small one. Right, we'll stick that in there. Yeah, that's the one thing we're struggling with is the, the length of the inner cable. It's pretty close, to be honest. Right, just lining these up so we can slot in the cable. Or cables. 
Okay, we'll do the inner one first, which is the right hand side brake. Yeah, that should work. There we go. We'll just twizzle that a little bit so it can't go. See, look, there's not a lot, is there? That balance bait is going to be really close. There is a bit more adjustment left on the cables, and we so we can minimise those um, because they will be used to help with the balance anyway. Or the, yeah. And then the actual brake can be adjusted on the actual rod itself. Okay, jeez, complicated to make it all work. Okay, there we go. See that one's got slightly more sticking out, so we can actually adjust that cable up. I'll I'll do that now so we get a bit more, but I reckon, I mean, realistically, we only need about three mil of steel behind the nipple. Maybe four. Let's do it four. Four mil. Four mil there, and then we know that that's 8.5, so four plus half of 8.5, so about 4.5 mil, sorry, 8.5 mil from the edge of the steel. That'll do. Oh, you're going to go mental now. Every, the comments are going to go ballistic. 8.5, we said, didn't we? Near enough. That'll do. 8.51. I've got time to mess around today. Okay. So, we're going to just go score that down there. There we are, look. How easy was that? And that's going to be our line for where the nipple placement is. Can you still see? Whoa, honey, just. Maybe I can move the camera, not be lazy. There you go. So we're going to do one, mark one up and use it as a template for the rest of it. There we go, that's one. See how I did it from there, you see? And now we have to do that, which is always a problem. If it was off camera, <laughs> you know what I'd be doing. There we go. Okay, so now we can centre punch mark those. We've still got one more hole to mark, which is the centre, down the centre of it. So that's down the 50 mil mark. The centre line, 50 mil. That's there. Oh, I did measure from that one. How cool is that? We'll put another line on it. There we are. Now, where's those thing the jiggly wiggies? I think we'll use the long one at the handbrake end, I think. And we'll use the short one at this end. Uh, it's going to need packing out with spacers, isn't it? Because it's, it's a lot wider than it needs to be, but a couple of washers will fix that. Saves me making one. So this is going to go on this end. It's well out of the way of all the cables and stuff. So, I don't know. It's quite deep as well, isn't it? So I would say 15 milling, 12 milling. Yeah, let's do 12 mil. Okay, subscribe to the edge, push your ruler up to it, and 12 mil. There we go. So that's going to be the hole for this, and that'll be an 8 mil hole. These will be 8.5. Five, won't they for the clearance I remember now. right center punch are you ready for some earthquake oh, we had an earthquake last night we did six point something rather on the Richter scale it was it was pretty big it was in Wellington we're, we're about we're a long way from Wellington and while well, the plants in the lounge started moving around you ready three two one now I've got another one here to do you ready three two one and one more you ready? Three, two, one. Lovely jubbly. Right, now we need to write on there what they're going to be. So this is going to be an 8.5. This is to remind me, right? 8.5. And this one is only going to be an 8. Cool. To the drill.
we've forgotten two more holes because we've got to be able to bolt these plates together so we've got some space up in these top corners and i think just a six mil bolt will be just fine for this kind of stuff there's not a lot of stress going on so where's my scriber gone there he is okay so i would suggest somewhere we could do it maybe in line with those actually better clamping effect let's do that let's just extend that line out looks a bit neater when things are in line doesn't it there we go that's that one oh by the way there's a rat in the loft in the roof of the, uh, the workshop yes I'm not over happy right where's the hang on maybe verniers again So this is a six mil hole, so it's going to go three mil that way. So how much of a wall do we want? Well, we've got plenty of room, haven't we, really? So we could probably go for somewhere about... In fact, we could do it in line with that one, couldn't we? What was that? 12? I think it was 12, wasn't it? Zero that. Now, you should never use verniers for this. It doesn't do any good. I've, I've used these verniers for this and many other things for the last 25 years. And they're still working just fine because they're a quality Mitsu Toyo. I can never pronounce it. Um, so you buy good ones, they last you. And you, I'm not saying that you should abuse your tools because you shouldn't. But these these have survived extreme. Even the strip's still there. It hasn't started to peel off like on the cheap ones. It's pretty good. Uh, yeah, it's about right. There we go. Right, so we've got two more holes to mark. You thought the earthquakes were over, didn't you? You ready? Okay, and going in. One, two, three. And one more. One, two, three. Hmm, I wonder actually. Thinking about it, by the time we've drilled that out to an eight and we've got a bolt head, that's too close. We need to back it off. Okay, design D. So it was 12. Let's go for eight to give us some room because that'll still leave five mil of steel after the bolt. 7.99 is near enough for me. Okay, you ready? There we are. Don't want to mess it up. I haven't got time to redo it. Okay, some more center punchy stuff. You ready? Three, two, one. And again, three, two, one. Boom. If you make this the center plate, nobody will ever see my mistake. <laughs> right, back to the drill. So before we drill out all the holes to the final sizes, we can use this now as a template to drill the others. And the, all three plates are going to get all these holes in them. So we'll do this one first. And I'm looking at my mole grips. They were here earlier on. There they are, look. We've got a convenient place on the plate to clamp it in the vise. So if I stick that on there, ooh, the right size as well. We'll go find a vise and I'll do that by hand with the little electric drill. That'll work. Same template, and the next one. I'll just line them up on the bench. Looks pretty good. Double check. Touch is a really good way of checking that you're bang on. You can feel. 
feel if it's out. It's good. Now, something to bear in mind is there may be some discrepancies in my actual marking out. So, <laughs> we should mark the top. Where's the pen? Now, the burrs are on the back where we came through. So, this is the top. So, we'll just write on there, top. Like that. And then everything should line up, hopefully. All right. Again, that'll be the top. Not to be confused with the top plate. That's the top of the plate. We'll do the same with this one, just so we... we... <laughs> okay. <laughs> right, little tip. Okay, back to the main drill. And we can drill all the final holes. Okay, six mil for all holes first. That's the smallest hole, isn't it? You're not very level. Well, forgive me. Right, where are the plates? Yeah. Okay, we need to go down a bit. Can you still see? Of course you can. Stick that at the top. I think it will clear. Yeah. Ooh, it's not very it's not very level. I'm gonna to have to do it down the bottom. There we go, it's full of swarf. God knows what I was drilling last time. The evil bits of swarf are those. So, six mil first for all holes, that's the smallest diameter.
Fred. Okay, so the next size up is 8mm, which is going to be the bolt hole for the uh, for the rod that goes to the front. Okay. Now, I just need to be sure which ones we're doing. So, a bit of metal in my thumb. Okay. Gonna be doing that one now two of them are finished that's those two are done now so we're just doing that one and that one I know it's easy to mess it up it's good to just stop for a second and think about what you're doing Too long. It's nice here though, apart when it rains and you get earthquakes and flooding and all that kind of stuff. Right, so 8.5 now, just for the two holes for the nickels. That's it, YouTube's banned me now, I've said it again. Right, 8.5 going in. I really, really, really need a new chuck. It's naked. Okay, so we'll drill these from the other side and I can mark these up quite simply. So it'll be just these ones. Andy, don't mess it up. Just the, you can't beat the yellow pen. The yellow pen is brilliant. Use it all the time. Right. You'll know I use it all the time because it's all over the place, isn't it? some deburring action to do and then we're finished drilling. Really good. Let me see. Well I've got to just cut the slots and then we're about done aren't we? on that bit. Right, deburring. I use a countersink to deburr. It's very quick and it's very neat as well actually. Right, going up in the world. I was always told that never blow swarf and go in your eye. And he was right, you can. Especially if you're not wearing eye protection. Oh man, that'll do. It's very high, isn't it? Okay.
done. Hokley Dokley. Right, so what have we got? We've got the master now. That's the one we're going to sandwich in the middle. So hopefully all these holes will line up. Oh, it looks pretty good to me. Okay, so only the middle one, which is this one, is going to get the two little slots cut in for the cable. Now we know the cable is 2.1 millimeters in diameter, so I need to cut some little tiny slots in there with a the slit disc, which are 2.1 mil wide. That'll be fun. I started rolling the camera a bit early because the lights have been flickering quite a bit. It looks like that thunderstorm may be causing problems further down the line, which means we could lose our power. Right, we'll just clamp that on there. That'll work. There's me goggles. Two point one millimeters. Believe me, it's bang on. I'm good at that kind of stuff. Right, let's go and check it on the cable. Okay, if all goes to plan, these should both slide through there. Oh yes, look at that. Absolutely, pretty damn good actually. And this one, yeah, slight clearance. Nice. Right, just time for a quick clean up because there's no way I can put that on a trailer. And then we can fit it. Hoo hoo! There we go. That should work. You see, the cables are going to come through those little holes there. They can't fall out. And we've got somewhere for that to clip on. Obviously, there'll be a couple of spaces in there. And we'll just use a bolt with a nylock. And our rod will fasten on there all going to plan and then the idea is that will just pivot in order to make sure that we get the same pull rate on both cables to each of the brakes pretty cool oh i stamped them t for top because obviously when i clean them up you can't see the writing anymore my yellow pen okay let's go and get it fitted and see if it works Ugh, now this might be a little bit fiddly so bear with me Now I have fixed the focus, so some parts may be a little bit out of focus, my apologies. Right, T for top. Pop those in there, like that. Get that bit, put it over the top. This being the fiddly bit. There we go, that's that one. There we go, look at that. And then, T for top. That way around. Hopefully, we can snap that on. There. Right, she's in. Put the bolts through. Bolt through, that should align everything. Put the nuts on. Hoo -hoo. So excited. Doing this kind of stuff takes ages. I hadn't planned for all this, you know. Anyway, it is what it is, and it's actually quite good for, good for making it. So, that is the balance bar done. So, all we need to do now is make the rod. Jeez, it's about 4 30 now. The weekend is disappearing very quickly. So, we have a bit of rod, it's probably a bit too long. And on one end, and it'll get threaded, one end will be that, and at the other end will be that. Okay, easy. But I now need to go and measure how long to make this rod. There will be some adjustment because that's quite deep, which means we can actually thread the rod quite a long way down, and I can adjust it, you know, up to a certain point. We'll probably get maybe an inch and a half of adjustment there, which is great, very much needed. We might get a little bit at this end, but not a lot. 
Okay, let's go and take a measurement. Oh man, right. So what I've done is I've actually just used a pair of mole grips and affixed this ruler to the actual middle of the hole on the balance bar. And we have Mr. Ruler. And look at that, it's near as damn it, exactly 600 millimeters to the center line of that bottom hole there, look. We're gonna use the bottom one to give us most clearance. I know it affects the pull rate, but we'll stick with that for now. It can always be changed. So, I would say 599, just to be pedantic. Crockley-dockley, it is time for some more, jeez, it's bent with a mess now, for some more drawings. So, we've got the hull on the balance bar, right? We've got the hull on the handbrake, and we know that between the center lines of those two holes, it's five nine nine millimeters now we have this and we have this to accommodate so now I know it's in that in that orientation but it doesn't matter for this calculation so we need to measure what they are so if we have the bar come through there let's say by 15 mil so we have the clevis around there and we go from the center line to there, 15. Apologies for the large pen. And on this one, we can go, I want to go quite short because, you know, I want to leave maximum room for adjustment to just tighten the brakes up. So again, we'll go, let's just go 10. And that gives, obviously when we adjust it up, the rod's going to get pulled through. So we'll just go 10 mil on that. So that's the long one. Yeah, look at that. I know it's not to scale, but we'll have the rod sticking through 10 millimeters. So we need to know from the center line of that, center point of the hole, to the inside edge of there, approximately, is going to be 8, 88. So from there to there is 88 millimeters. And on this one, exactly the same measurement, we can do it from the inside actually. We have got, that's 40, 41 millimeters, okay? So from the center of there to there is 41 millimeters. Calculator time. We've got 599 to the center, to the center, minus 88, so 599 minus 88 equals minus, 41 equals, and then we want it to extend inwards by 15 mil there, so plus 15 equals, and then plus 10, plus 10 equals. So the rod needs to be 495 millimeters, and that will take the rod inboard by 10 at that end, and inboard by 15 at that end. Whew, that was an easy one to work out, wasn't it? 495. Super job. Well, I tried starting off in the lathe and it didn't work. It's because it's stainless, it's quite tough. And I needed three hands, I didn't have three hands. So it's gonna take a while. So I don't expect you to watch all of this. And uh, no doubt the editing guy will be along and he'll cut out pretty much all of it. So when I finish threading this at both ends, we'll put, get it put together and we still got one more thing to do, actually, haven't we? Got those little feral things to make, those little spaces for the rear, so it sits in those clamps properly, the cable. It's gonna be a long day. We're getting there. Man, it's quite slow going. Don't wanna damage the tap. Now, you might ask why the tap is, I'm using it upside down, because uh, normally this is down there. The reason is the tap is quite blunt on the other side. This was the only side I could get to work, and I couldn't be bothered to swap it around in the holder. So, <laughs> there you go. So this is going to be the end that goes onto the handbrake, and it needs 70 millimeters of thread for all that adjustment. It's always good to have lots of adjustment. So now is the time to give it lots of adjustment. 
and I've marked the line. We're over halfway, which is nice. It'll take me about 10 minutes to do this by the time I've finished. And then the other end, I'll need about 30 millimeters of thread. Can't have enough of this stuff, it's very good. Save the tap, sorry, the die. I don't have another M10 by 1.5 die. Pretty sure it's 1.5, 1.25, whatever the standard one is. It's not the five metric. Oh, the marks disappeared. We can't be too far off now. These have a really big die hold. It was a ratchet one actually. I left it in England. To be fair, it was for bigger dies than this. It wouldn't have worked anyway now, but not for this job. It was pretty cool. Right, let's just spin it back up. Wow. I think that's going to be long enough. Yes. The mark has gone. Woohoo! That's the big one done. Grab a nut, see if, see if it goes down all right. One nut, oh, that's pretty good thread actually. Oh, yes, that'll do me nicely. Right, let's hope the other end goes just as well. It's all covered in oil. Yes, I know the workshop floor is other sweet. Mrs. Mechanic. That's actually not too bad, is it? Okay. Without the lathe, now. This one is for the, you know, pivoty end, the balance plate. Look at that. That's well in the middle, isn't it? Good job, people. Now. The thing with trailer parts is because it's trailers, there's, there's, there's no quality sometimes. Anyway, no accuracy. Right. So we said about 15 mil in, it needs to protrude two. So if we go 25, that'll give us room for a nut on the back at 15 mil in. So let's do 30 just to be on the safe side. Gives us a little bit of wiggle room then, doesn't it? So 30 mil. We get down to the yellow mark, we're done. Okay, here goes. This is by far the hardest part of tapping anything, is making sure that you, you, get, you start perpendicular to whatever it is you're tapping. Putting a thread on, or dying in this case. I suppose you could have died. Very difficult. And we are way off to come down this side of it. So it's important you keep stopping and looking. And we're still way off. Come on, Mr. Young, we've done this hundred times. Hundreds and hundreds of times. That's looking better. Okay. It's all in the start. It's looking all right. At least it has started, that's a bonus. Right, how does that look? Oh yes, pretty good. And that way, yes, very good. Okay, we will mosey on. There's not a lot you can do about it if you go wrong at the start, other than, I suppose, get another bit of rod, and, unless you can afford to cut a little bit off. 
sort of a one shot deal really. Cool. Cheers Jared. He's a top load that guy from Forge, he really is. We're well overdue a beer, Jared. Never got our Christmas pint, did we? We're just too bloody busy. Got to be there now, aren't we? Yes, that'll do. That'll do nicely. Hate mosquitoes, hate flies, hate any kind of insect in all honesty. Apart from maybe a ladybird, we can let them off, can't we? Maybe dragonflies, they're pretty cool. Right. Okay, get all the crap. Otherwise, it'll go all over the workshop, all over my hands and stuff. Where's that nut? Okay. Oh yes. Nice. I like it. Hoo hoo! Right, everything's still a bit warm. I had to just grind the f couple of flats down, the opposite flats, on these nuts to get them to fit in the these little thingamajigs, little brackets properly. So that one is going on this end. So that nut goes on first, and it's very, very hot. Jeez, let's just clean those threads out. Bit of blue roll stuck in there. Pretty cool, it's stainless. So actually, that's wrong, isn't it? That doesn't go on there yet. We have a normal nut first, because it's the outside nut. We'll stick him down there, look. Stick that on. Now, I have drilled these 10 mil. So that should go in there just fine. Maybe I'll do it ten and a half. Oh, no. That's crap. What's that one like? Did I do that one? Yeah, I'll drill both of those again. Back in a second. We'll try again! What happened there? Right, so there we are. Much better. Okay, so that's one of the modified nuts. Stick him down there. Dum 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 dum. There he is. Twizzle that round. Okay, I'll leave it loose for now because it's going to need some adjustment. Now, another normal nut. My apologies if it's not focused. In fact, let's just clean those threads out as well because these haven't been cleaned out. You always get little bits of swarf and stuff in it, so it's a good idea to clean it all out. There we go. Dum, 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 dum. Quite enjoying this now. At the start I was like, oh really? Another job to do? But hey, if we can make DR200 clutch cables work, even if it's temporary, uh, not, I'm not a gorilla on the uh, on the handbrake lever. So these should, based on the length we had, these should be quite high up actually. Okay, we'll stick that on. That's our magically modified nut. God knows why it was tight. They should have made them a little bit bigger. Obviously it's designed, right? These little brackets are all designed for like imperial sized stuff. I don't use imperial sized stuff because I'm from England. We use metric. I've grown up with metric. Obviously the old guys that are in the war. They're imperial people, but I'm not. Okay, done. Woohoo! Right, we have now a link rod. Do, 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 do. And that end is handbrake, and that end is balance bar. Okay. We still can't test the handbrake though, don't forget. I've still got to make those little adapters, those little spacer pieces for the cable onto the bracket on the back of the brake backing plate. Once that's done, I can test it. I'm running out of time today. It's going to take me a while to make those on the lathe, I think. Anyway, let's go get this fitted and see how it looks. See if I've got my sums right. Okay, now I've not used Nylox for now. This is all just like a, a dry fit, we call it. So, move on. Crap out of the way. I might be able to get my fingers now. I've not put any spaces in there either 
for now. But I'll chuck a couple of washers in just to take up that clearance. Maybe a, a tool mill washer either side. A nice stainless one will be good. So we'll stick that on there. Right, to the other end. Oh, <laughs> is it going to be the right length? Oh, it looks about right. Oh, look at that. Now, slight technical problem. How are we going to get that through? <laughs> hang on, hang on, bear with. There we are. Right. Oh, bloody perfect. Nice. So again, there'll be some spaces in there just to take up that gap. And we've got plenty of clearance on that bracket as well, which is good. Okay, a quick look around. Okay, so this is where we're at so far. We've got, we've made the brackets, we've got the adjusters at the back. There's lots of adjustment on this system, which is really good. Got adjusters there, we've got adjusters mid cable as well. Focus. We've got adjusters mid cable as well, which is pretty cool. And then we've got the rods. This is a side view of the trailer. It's all above the, there's nothing dangling down other than the cables a little bit, but they'll be, they'll be clipped up out of the way. Make some little clips. And then of course we've got the bit onto the handbrake. Now, I can't pull the handbrake because of course the outers down here will only slip through the brackets. So that's the last thing to do is to do those. And then I've also got to make some little pins that go onto the arms. I'm not going to use bolts in there. We'll use, I'll make some proper pins for it. So, looking pretty good. Okay, all going to plan at this point. We're sort of bumbling our way through pretty well, actually. Very happy with things as they are. Obviously, the whole thing relies on whether those clutch cables are going to be strong enough or whether it just nip, rips the nip, one of the nipples off the end of the cable because of the, st the stress. Because the pulling force is massively higher than what you get when you're operating a clutch on a motorcycle. So if they do survive, it'll be testament to Suzuki for their good quality cables. Um, so next job now is for me to make those little ferrule things, those little spacers. Uh, that's going to be some work on the lathe. I've got to find some steel for that or something I can make them out of. I'm really short of stock at the moment. I've just about used everything I have for various projects. So let me have a mooch around see what I can come up with and ideally we don't want to increase the distance from the outer to that plate and the reason for that is because we'd use up some of the adjustments and I want to preserve all the adjustment I can because remember we're really short on cable on the inner length um, yeah maybe just a washer might work I don't know because it wouldn't locate it on the in the hole on the bracket, so it needs a shoulder to go into the hole in the bracket. Leave it with me. Um, here's a word from Holly. Now then, crew, tall girl Holly here. Don't miss the next live stream, 8:30 a.m. Sunday. even coming in the workshop. Got water on my bench. Got puddles down here. Oh the big's gonna get wet. Oh come on. Really? We've got water dripping off the lights. Oh no, that's not ideal, is it? Right, I've done some measurements and a drawing. Let's take a look. Right, said Fred. So, we have the end of the cable and the, the piece at the end, the aluminium piece, is 8.5mm in diameter before the shoulder. So, oh, and the actual bracket on the actual, on the back of the brake backing plate 
is about 14.1 mil in diameter. Very funny sizes to be fair, but anyway, 14.1 mil in diameter. So I need to make a little piece to go in to, to basically locate this into that bracket, which is 8.5 in ID, internal diameter, and with an exterior diameter of, let's say, we'll round it down to 14 mil, so it has a little bit of wiggle room. And it has to have a shoulder on it, so I've given it a 3 mil shoulder. And the length, this length here isn't really that particularly relevant, but that thickness there is, because that's going to essentially use up 3 millimeters of our inner cable length, which is bad. But anything less than 3, I think, may not be strong enough, and it may pull through. So I had a hunt around for some steel, and I was looking around in the drawers, and I came across these, some flange nuts. And on the flange nut, this is about 18 and a half millimeters, so we're pretty damn close. And it was only a, a rough guesstimate at 20 mil. And the, I, the ID, where the threads are, that is about 8.6. So I can leave that as it is. I just need to machine down in the lathe. The distance between the peaks here is about a mil and a half too much. So it won't quite fit in the, in the hole at the moment. But that will work as a really good temporary measure so we can test the handbrake. So I need to do two of those in the lathe. Hang on a minute, need to sort me two on the others. millimeters we want I might have overcooked it to be fair but we'll see not that it really matters too much if you can near enough fourteen point oh five perfect right we're gonna mount the other one on and do the same with that so if we just hang on if we mark that on there there we go. Then we should be about right for the next one. How the hell am I going to do that off there now? I'm going to get a bit more of a, a flat surface for, to locate it. There we go. What's that going to be? Can't be far off, can it? That. I know I should do it like that really, but you can't see, can you, very well? Oh, 14.04! That's just bloody amazing, isn't it? Absolutely spot on. That'll do me. Right. Back to the bench. I wonder what that motorcycle was then. It's still the DR200 that I stole the clutch cable off this morning. Okay, so we've got these, but I can't get them onto the cable, so I need to do that 2.1mm slit again to be able to offer it onto the cable and slide it up and then pull the whole thing together. And then once it's all tensioned up, I'm pretty sure these will stay in place. Slit disc. Over there. Right. We are so close. In fact, even if the power goes off, we can still finish. We've got torches and everything's battery powered. Woohoo!
Is it going to fit? Is it going to... Oh, yes. Right, let's get it slapped in. Holy moly. It's been a long day, but this was quite a surprise that this actually might work, work without too much effort. Look at that. Okay, through there. Oh, yes. Very nice. Right, where's my bolt? Now, I normally use long nose pliers for this bit. Hang on. My sausage fingers will not fit down the gap. So, it's always a bit of luck getting this in, actually. Always. <laughs> First time. What a pro. That's all I can say. Don't push it back out again. <laughs> okay, like I said, these bolts are really temporary. So much temporary stuff today. But they look pretty good actually. I'm quite happy with that. And obviously it's got to make sure that they turn so that the cable can't, you know, can't go out the other way. There we go. Fantastic. Right, I'll do the other side and then we'll test it. Hmm. Got some iron filing stuck on the phone, a bit weird. Hey, it's been a long day and it's been really cool to have you along on this whole journey getting this handbrake system hopefully working. I haven't pre-tested it before I filmed. That would be cheating. And I didn't. Honest. Let's go and check it now and hopefully those cables won't snap. Activating handbrake. One click. Does it still move? It does. Two clicks. Does it still move? It does. Three clicks. Hang on. Well that one's definitely locked. One more click. Four clicks. Oh, yes. That one is actually locked. It's just the shoes moving on the backing plate. So it acts as a handbrake. Can I move it? Hang on, what can I hold on to? Oh, I know why. There's a block of wood behind it. Get rid of that. Oh. Don't need that anymore. Okay, here we go. No, oh, it has a handbrake. Four clicks, I'm not gonna push it. Yes, fantastic. Bloody good. And everything's still loose. I haven't even tightened these bolts up yet. <laughs> okay, quick look around while it's in the tension position. There's obviously lots and lots left on the quadrant on there. Now, one thing I didn't do, and that was put that bar, that piece of plate, along there, this one. So I'm still going to contemplate doing that, but this is a 10mm piece of plate. The chances of that bending is pretty slim. But, I think when I do any more welding I'll just I'll plug it on there look just to give us some more beef because you can't go wrong with that we've got a little bit of clearance down there so that shouldn't chatter wow it sort of works doesn't it how long it'll work for if I, if I reckon if I really crank it up it would snap one of the cables and I don't want to do that because I have only spare ones other than on the ultimate farm bike and I don't want to steal that one I really don't, but I will definitely get a spare one for the trip. They work really well, those little top hat thingies, don't they, look? Super job. Just a nut. Right. That's today's work done. I need to tidy up now. And mop up. <laughs> Back to the bench. Now, obviously, the trailer, the handbrake system is going to get a pretty good testing because I'm constantly moving it around. And up until now, I had to use wooden blocks to stop it moving when I'm working on it. Uh, but now I can just put the handbrake on. I can. Brilliant. Um, so if it's going to fail, I think it will fail pretty soon, you know, with those cables. They're, they're actually quite old cables, so maybe new cables would last a bit longer. But I am inclined to get some proper automotive cables made up to the lengths, the specs of the Suzuki ones. 
I could maybe go for a little bit more free length on the inner um, because there's lots of adjustment available. I'll need to make some modifications to the balance plate because of course the nipples on the automotive cables will be a lot larger or possibly they might even just be threaded so I'll need to make a new kind of balance plate but that's not hard. Uh, this will probably all be done after the trip. Um, I'll need to make the threads in the main plate on the chassis bigger than M8, whatever they are on the cables. They normally have a really long threaded section on the outer with a couple of lock nuts. Again, more adjustments. So that might need some minor modification, uh, or maybe even just drilled through and put a lock nut either side. You know, we'll work it out. Uh, I'll need to widen up the holes to let the cable in as well. But other than that, it'll work. It works really well. Very, very happy. And I'm pleased that I've used a link bar for the first half rather than just another cable because you know the more cables you have especially when you know when they're in a, an automotive style and they've got an outer sheave to it uh, over time they do corrode you know so it will be another expense but a bar will last forever and it, it's a lot more durable it's not going to get snagged on rocks and stuff either uh, you know as a cable can get ripped off anyway hopefully you enjoyed this video it's been pretty full on to be honest all day long I haven't stopped um, if you did, why not subscribe to the channel if you're not already subscribed, ring the bell, turn on notifications and that way when I upload any new videos you won't miss out. And there's going to be a few more yet in this series of building the big little adventure trailer. Uh, and I've only got two more weeks to finish this trailer. That's how much the pressure is. We've still got the pod to clad, the floor to put in the pod, we've still got to paint the chassis, I've got to finish the, all these little ancillary bits on the chassis before we can clean it up and paint it. We've got the bike rack to paint, we've got the drawbar to paint, that that's finished now, it just needs painting. Um, it needs to get registered, I need to get a warrant of fitness put on the trailer, I've got all the lights to do, I've got to wire up the electric brakes. Yeah, there's a bit still to do. So there'll be quite a few more episodes in this series until it's finished, I guess. Okay crew, um, you can also find me on Facebook, Instagram and Twitter. Feel free to communicate through any of those portals. However, my email address is down the bottom. You can email me directly if you like as well. And I, I normally do reply to emails. I'm pretty damn busy at the moment, so it's not normally an immediate response. Um, but I'll do my very best for you. Now, if you'd like to support the building of this trailer for this adventure ride, which is a charity ride from Kate Rianger to Bluff, uh, Mrs. Mechanic is riding a little tiny Honda monkey bike uh, over 4,000 kilometers down gravel roads, rivers, beaches, paper roads, back roads, you, you name it, she's doing it. This is assuming, of course, there are any roads left in New Zealand in a couple of weeks' time, given the amount of rain that we've had. Uh, the Coromandel area reportedly had 95% of its roads closed the other day. You're not going anywhere at that, are you? That's it. Game over. You're staying at home unless you've got a Chinook, you know. Anyway, um, what else? So, yes, you, if you want to support the building of the trailer and the purchase of all the equipment to do the ride, to facilitate the charity ride, uh, then do that through the Andy Mechanic PayPal. And there's a link in the description, and there's also a little icon on the homepage on YouTube of Andy Mechanic. Uh, and you can click on that and just even a buck it all helps you know um, if you want to donate to the actual ride itself for the Alzheimer's Trust uh, then do that through Mrs Mechanics give a little page and I will put a link again in the description for that for you uh, like I say that's going to start in a couple of weeks I think it's about the 5th or the 6th of March is kickoff date it's a little bit fluid at the moment because you know we're not ready um, but yes, it's going to happen in March. We've got three weeks to get it done. The ferry is booked between the south, uh, well, between the north and the South Island, so we have to be down in Wellington to get on the ferry. I think it's Wednesday the fifteenth of March. That's it. We have to be on that ferry. So she's got to have ridden the entire of the North Island by that point. No pressure, Mrs. Mechanic. Uh, what else? Uh, you can also support the channel through Patreon as well, so you can set up a regular donation that way if you prefer. Okay, crew, uh, watch out for episode 9. See you next time. Cheers. Over and out. And we get the
Ha <laughs> <laughs>